Hey all and welcome back. Um, I have another example problem here I wanted to work through with you guys. So um, I want you to go ahead and start by just pausing this video before we even jump in and I want you to try this problem on your own. We're told that there's two beetles that are moving on some flat sand. We're told about the movement of beetle one and then the movement of beetle two and we're told they're ending up at the same location. Okay, so you're given both legs of Beetle 1's journey and only the first leg of Beetle 2's journey, and you need to figure out the second leg of Beetle 2's journey, expressing it as a vector. So go ahead, pause the video, and try it out. All right, now hopefully you gave it a go. If you got stuck, you can watch the beginning and then pause and then continue on whenever you feel like I've given you enough hints, but I'm going to just go ahead and work through the whole thing. So here we go. We have this situation where we have Beetle 1 that's going to move in two parts. It starts by moving due east, a total distance of 0.59 meters, which I'm going to call this section or this segment of its journey, vector A. And then from there, it continues even further, now at a 28 degrees north of east. So north of east is going to be off kind of like this here, where this is our angle of 28 degrees, since that's above or north of east. And I'm going to go ahead and call this vector B. And the resultant of those two, the vector representing where the beetle ended up, I'm going to go ahead and call vector C, which again, with vector addition, you start at the tail of vector A and end at the tip of vector B. And that is what we would call vector C. And just as a reminder, in vector addition, we would write that as C equals vector A plus vector B, or in terms of the components, which is what we're going to use to do this problem, we know that CX will equal AX plus BX, and also we know that CY is equal to AY plus BY. All right, so right away we can see we're probably going to need to break things into X and Y components. All right, now moving to beetle two, though, before we get uh, to any conclusion. We're told that it first moves 1.33 meters, 47 degrees east of due south. So what that means is he's going to go this direction, where this here, east of south, is our 47 degree angle. I will call this vector D. And then we know that we're going to end up at the same place as beetle 1, so it's going to end up with the same resultant vector, vector C. I'll try to draw this best I can the same so that's the same and now we're trying to figure out what is the second leg of beetle 2's journey so if we went ahead and called this here our resultant vector E the question is what is E that's really what we're trying to figure out that's our end goal and again by our same vector addition tools we know that vector C is going to be equal to vector D plus vector E or in this case rearranging things we know that E which is what we're trying to find is going to be C minus D and again if we think in terms of components we can know that EX will equal CX minus DX and EY will equal CY minus DY so right away just by setting this up I haven't done any math using any of the numbers in this problem but right away just setting this up what I can see here is that I'm gonna to need to take and break down my vectors A and B into their X and Y components so that I can find CX and CY. And then once I do that and break vector D into its X and Y components, I can then figure out my resulting vector I'm trying to find. So let's get started on this process. So let's start with vector A. So AX is gonna be, well, let's see, here's vector A. Oh, look, the entire thing is only in the X direction. So all 0.59 meters of it is only in the X direction. So my X component is a positive 0.59 meters. And then, oh, my meters didn't come out. And then our Y component of vector A is just going to be equal to 0 meters because the entire thing is in the X direction. Now if we go to vector B, and sometimes it's a little hard to see, so I would even encourage you if you get confused with your picture to move over, find yourself some new clean space. Maybe we'll just kind of go like this. And let's just draw vector B all by itself. So if I just drew vector B, what it would look like again is my vector here that's 
uh, let's see, 0.85 meters long, and it's at an angle of 20, oh, what is it? Let's see here, flip over, 28 degrees north of due east. So this would be my 28 degree angle. And so we can see here that this would be BX, the adjacent side, and then BY would be my opposite side of my little triangle there, right? And so what we can say is then BX is going to be equal to, again, it's the adjacent side. So that's going to be, if we use the cosine function, cosine, remember, of the angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And so bx would just be equal to 0 0.85, the hypotenuse, multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta, which in this case is 28 degrees. Oops. And so if we went ahead and did the math, what we would find is that bx should come out to be equal to approximately 0 0.7 505 meters and then we can do the same thing with by so by is going to be the same thing but with the sine function since it's the opposite side and so by is going to be 0 0.85 meters multiplied by the sine of 28 degrees and so by will come out to be equal to a positive 0 0.3991 meters. Now it's real important to always pay attention to sine. Notice all of these are positive because we're in the positive x direction with bx and positive y direction with by. But as we'll see with vector d, that's not always the case. In fact, just to make our lives easier, let's go ahead and break vector d into its components now as well. So let's do the same game we did here. I'm going to go ahead and make my axes again here for vector D so I can draw it all by itself. So vector D was off in this direction here. It was a little bit longer, 1.33 meters, and it was at an angle of 47 degrees. Now here, the degree, the angle is relative to the direction of south. So it's 47 degrees east of south. So again, now if you look, here, this is going to be our dy. Actually, don't need the vector hat on there, so I'll erase that. It's a unit vector direction. And then over here, in this direction, is our dx. So now notice our x is the opposite, and our y is the adjacent side. All right, so sine and cosine will be flipped if we use 47 degrees. You can also use the complementary angle up here, of 43 degrees if you'd prefer. But I'm going to go with the 47 just to show you how that works. So dx is going to be equal to our hypotenuse of 1.33 meters multiplied by now since it's the opposite side we're going to use the sine function so the sine of 47 degrees. So dx should come out to be equal to 0 0.9727 meters. If you notice also, just a kind of side note, I'm taking all of my components out to four sig figs instead of just three like the problem statement has in order to make sure I don't have any rounding errors or at least to decrease the likelihood. All right, now dy is again the hypotenuse, 1.33 meters multiplied by the cosine of the angle, 47 degrees, since it's the adjacent side, but it's down. Notice, if I just did the math here, it'd give me a positive value. I need to insert a negative sign because that is down, and I need to make sure to account for that. So dy, then, should come out to be equal to a negative, again, because it's going down, 0 0.9071 meters. So now that I have all my vector components, I can pop back over to where we were working earlier here, and now I should be able to figure out what EX and EY are after finding CX and CY. So let's start with our CX and CY. So CX should be AX, 0 0.59 meters, plus BX, which was 0 0.7505 meters. So CX should come out to be equal to, where'd it go? Here we go, 1.341 meters. And then if we do CY, that's going to be equal to AY, which was 0 meters, that's easy, plus
plus by, which was 0 0.3991 meters. And so you can see that cy is just going to be equal to 0 0.3991 meters. Sorry, my handwriting's getting a little sloppy there, but let's go ahead and find ourselves a little more space. So I'm going to zoom down here. Sorry about that. And now figure out EX and EY so we can finish this thing up. So EX is going to be equal to CX, 1.341 meters, minus DX, which was our 0 0.9727 meters. And so if you solve for EX, you should find that to be equal to 0 0.3678 meters. And then EY again is going to be CY, 0 0.3991 meters minus a negative, so that's going to end up a positive or an addition, minus a negative, 0 0.9071 meters. So if you do the math on that, you should find that EY comes out to be equal to, I got 1.306 meters, and now to finish the problem, you, you might think, oh yeah, we're done. We got E, X, E, Y. That's what we're asked for. But if you look, the problem specifically states you need to express it in terms of the magnitude and direction of that, it, uh, that the second beetle needed to walk. So magnitude, again, we would write it like this, the magnitude of vector E, which is equal to the square root of the X component squared plus the Y component squared. So I'm going to trust your ability to plug those in, all right? So if you do that and you plug and chug, you should get approximately 1.36 meters. So that is a box-worthy, boom, magnitude of our vector. And for the direction, maybe just so we don't get confused, let's draw this out, okay? For the direction, vector E has an X component of 0.36. So it's going to be kind of like this. And then a Y component of 1.36, which is much more, sort of like this. And so our end resulting vector E is going to be somewhere up in here. And let's go ahead and find this angle theta, which if we look at our cardinal directions, that's going to be that many degrees north of east because we start from east and we rotate towards north. So to find that, if this again is EY over here and this is EX, what we can observe is that the tangent of that angle that we're trying to find should be equal to opposite, so that's EY, divided by, that's a Y, the adjacent side, which is EX. So our angle theta should be equal to the inverse tangent of EY over EX. And so again, I trust you guys to plug those numbers in to your calculators, but when I did it, I found the result to be 74.3 degrees, and again, that is north of east. So after labeling our direction, boom, we box it up, and there we go. We completed that sample problem. It's a tricky one, right? But it's really good practice, I think, for thinking about and looking at how to deal with vector addition. Let me know if you have any questions.